Emergency doctor says the ongoing problem of drug abuse is why we need to keep warning people about the danger, especially here in the Valley, of heroin and fentanyl overdoses. Tonight, Valley News Team's Neil Carlson explains what's being planned in Grand Forks to combat the problem. So I, I think it's an ongoing concern. When Grand Forks police and law enforcement agencies around the region saddle up for another day of patrolling our streets, there's a pretty good chance they'll be involved in some type of incident involving drugs. Police say the drug and overdose problem across our region and across the country just continues to keep rolling along. And it's a problem that doesn't appear to be going away soon. Here at Altru Hospital's Emergency Center, Dr. Chris Bow sees it all the time. Every day we see somebody with an addiction-related problem. So it's, really? it's definitely very prominent in our community. Yep. It's, it's prominent in our community. It's much worse than it, than it was, I would say, five years ago. Police say that right now on the streets of Grand Forks, there are very small doses of drugs that are deadly. And Dr. Bo says it's a warning that's very appropriate today following the death of Prince. When you think about, you know, such a, a humongous star like Prince even potentially being the victim of this kind of uh, problem, it's a problem that will be addressed at a free community forum next month at the Empire Arts Center. Not only uh, the minutia of what is the drug and, and what does it do, um, but more of the longer reaching effects, the effects on families, the effects on uh, neighborhoods, the effects on communities. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. That free community forum regarding drug overdoses in Grand Forks will be held Tuesday, May 10th, at, again at the Empire Arts Center. A Fargo man is asking the city commission to consider allowing all emergency officials to carry Narcan. FM Ambulance has had Narcan for quite some time, but paramedics are not required to carry it. The man is proposing that all City of Fargo law enforcement, firefighters and first responders be equipped with opiate overdose reversal kits and first aid emergency breathing masks. He tells us a family member of his is a drug addict and calls Narcan a miracle medicine that's saving lives. The proposal is set to be discussed at Monday's Fargo City Commission meeting. A beautiful day out there with more sunshine. Let's find out more about tonight's forecast from Hutch. Hi, Hutch. Thanks so much, Andrea. Hope you're having a great Friday. Weather-wise, not too many hitches in the giddy-up out there as we are enjoying low 60s, plentiful sunshine and some light winds. It's as warm as 67 in Aberdeen, so to the south and west warmer. Cooler along the international border as we head into the evening hours. A live look at that tower cam showing quiet conditions here. We're cooler along the border essentially because we have a few more clouds, some showers making their way through that area. And in Lake of the Woods County, from time to time, the radar is showing some blips of blue. That would be flaky. Not a lot of widespread snow expected this evening, but in Fargo, clear, quiet, light winds, and quiet conditions into your evening. It does look like we enjoy some warmth to start the weekend, but look out. There's a chance of some rain, maybe some rumbles of thunder this weekend. I'll have the latest in your hour by hour forecast here in a couple of moments, Andrea. All right, thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. We now know the name of the woman who's in custody in connection with the death of a one-year-old child. She has been identified as Janelle Red Dog, and she told police she did it. Investigators say Red Dog admitted to punching Kensley Olsen three times which led to the one-year-old's death. She also confessed to putting the child in a duffel bag and placing the bag in a dumpster. Authorities say they have Red Dog's confession recorded, but when asked in court if Red Dog was sober during the confession, authorities were not sure. No formal charges have been filed yet. Red Dog is being held without bond. One-year-old Kensley Olson's body was found in Poplar, Montana. That's where she disappeared, and it prompted an Amber Alert in North Dakota. The case is still under investigation. It's Friday and time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 44-year-old Craig Olson is wanted for felony theft of property. You can call your local law enforcement if you have any information on Craig Olson. An 18-year-old Fargo man is in jail in connection with shots being fired in West Fargo a little over a week ago. It was one of a number of shots fired reports police in Fargo and West Fargo are investigating. In this case, Nadine Khoury is being held on a charge of aggravated reckless endangerment. Police combed this area at 45th Street and 7th Avenue East after the initial reports came in around 9 a week ago Wednesday. 
They were looking for shell casings or something that might indicate gunfire. They later found evidence of gunshots in two West Fargo neighborhoods. Both are on the city's east side, one of them not far from the area police first searched. Police say they don't believe anyone was injured, but they say they found a bullet hole in a car and in a house. We'll have much more on this case on Valley News Live at 6. A Minnesota woman is calling herself the world's meanest mom for attempting to teach her teenager daughter a lesson. The lesson involves Craigslist and selling something of her daughter's that few teenagers would want to give up. Lou Raguse explains. The Dodge Ram parked at the end of Amy Adams' driveway this is, it. is a teen dream. This truck definitely has character. Jacked up on 35-inch tires. It does take a certain kind of girl to drive a truck like this. That girl was Amy's 15-year-old daughter. It shakes their house. Whose learner's permit next month will change to a driver's license just as her truck changes hands. She was on her one more chance and the truck was getting sold and she blew that one more chance on Monday when she decided to skip school. Fed up, Amy listed her daughter's truck on Craigslist to sell the pickup while advertising the punishment. I started that ad with, so because I'm the meanest mom in the world. The ad drips with sarcasm. But Amy says it's also drenched with truth. They all do this. Challenging the idea that parents should act as friends. Where are they going to be in life five years from now, ten years from now, when they're wandering around disrespecting the wrong people? Amy received over 400 responses to the ad. Over half of them were just other parents saying, hey, high five. To those who think she went too far, Amy says she knows exactly how her daughter feels. To my mom. I was short-tempered and I was snippy and I was obnoxious. The woman in these photos, to Amy, once was the meanest mom in the world. You know. Amy's just glad she matured enough to thank her for it. I did. The minute they diagnosed her as terminal, we had that conversation. Amy hopes one day her daughter will appreciate her tough parenting. I hope that she realizes that... You know, that it's okay to discipline your kids, and it's okay to have expectations, and it's okay for them to have consequences. And when she learns those lessons, Amy says the money made on this truck will one day buy her daughter a new car. This story has been generating a lot of comments on our Facebook page. To join the conversation, just like Valley News Live on Facebook, and you can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Big news for Bison football fans today. The man at the reins is staying put. Chris Kleiman signed a contract for six more years at NDSU, which keeps him at NDSU through the 2021 season. Kleiman is in his sixth year overall and his third as the head coach at NDSU. Fans will get a taste of football this weekend, tonight during the Bison Showcase, and Saturday for the annual Green and Gold Spring Game. And while many will be going to the free game, eyes will also be on Carson Wentz and Joe Haig during the NFL draft next week. It's such a neat experience for us as coaches to see all the NFL coaches and scouts, and we've had owners here, we've had general managers here come up to our office and tell us uh, how, how well we're doing things here and how they like to watch our guys play and they see a well-coached, disciplined team. That means a lot to us as coaches that uh, our brand is out there, not just regionally, but nationwide. Coach Kleiman will be sitting with Carson Wentz and his family next week during the draft. And we're back at the Fargo Dome for the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Coverage begins at 1230, getting you set for the annual green and gold spring game. We'll carry the ring ceremony for your five-time defending national champions and bring you live interviews with Joe Haig and Carson Wentz as they prepare for next week's draft. MSUM students got a special look inside businesses in downtown Fargo in an effort to show how each space impacts each company. Students toured seven businesses, including U.S. Bank, Myriad Mobile, and Dogs ID. It's the university's first ever Dragon Business Crawl, where people in each downtown location explain how and why their space is designed to help their business succeed and to help students find the perfect fit when it comes to getting a job after college. A massive recall for one automaker after customers noticed their vehicles moving without them. They're, that's still ahead tonight. And from mostly moony first thing in the morning to mostly sunny throughout our day, the warm 60s have returned. The weekend starts out on a warm note, but we'll have details of some rain in your forecast coming up next.